Hello everybody, this is our sacristan training, retraining. Um, things are not going to be that much different. I am going to ask you, of course, with masks, we're encouraging, strongly encouraging people to wear masks, but we're not requiring that. But with sacristans at the beginning, because you're going to have to do some things where you're getting closer to people, you need to take the temperature of the Eucharistic ministers. <laughs> if people have a fever, and that's the guidelines tell us anything over 100.4, they cannot be a Eucharistic minister. In fact, we should send them home because if they have that fever, the chances are they could pass it on to somebody else. That could possibly be coronavirus. So we have these no-touch thermometers. Okay? So you take it and the way you turn it on, you just touch the, you got this trigger, you just touch the trigger. And you'll see that that turns on. So let me show you. I'm going to come. You want to get within a couple inches of the person. You touch the trigger, and then you get a temperature. Tammy does not have a temperature. Okay, so um, let me turn it off. Okay. Let me try that one more time. Can we do that? Okay. So, okay. So there's a. You don't touch them, but you get within a couple inches of their head. And you get the temperature, and if they're over 100, then we're not going. They can't be a Eucharistic minister. Okay. Um, you just sign people in. Again, we're going to have the priest and three Eucharistic ministers in church, and then a Eucharistic minister who's going to be in the parking lot. So there's a parking lot Eucharistic minister, and and that. So um, you're going to get people's temperatures. Let me turn this off. Here we are back in the sacristy, and of course, one of the most important jobs for the sacristans is setting up for Mass. Now that's going to be different than it has been in the past. We're not going to be having a chalice distributed. So there's no decanter of wine. There's no chalices, you know, four chalices. There's no purificators for those chalices. And there's not going to be an offertory procession. So there's not going to be gifts going on the back table. In fact, the back table will be out of church. <laughs> so um, what we're going to be doing is we need five ciboriums for Eucharistic ministers. There'll be the priest and three Eucharistic ministers in church, and there'll be one person who goes to the parking lot. So we will need five vessels for communion. Now, those vessels, because there's only going to be roughly 150, I doubt if they'll, we'll get 200. Probably 150 people will be in church. So we, we need to have, you know, check the tabernacle like you always are right now as I'm doing this training for you on Friday morning before our opening weekend, before Pentecost, we have a saborium that is packed full. So that saborium would probably by itself be enough host for the first couple masses that we're going to have. But when you set up, it's going to be a little different. We have our usual patent. We have the pall that we usually have on, but you notice we have another patent underneath. For those of you who grew up as servers, you might remember, this is the kind of pattern the priest always used. And he had the one mid-sized host that he used. So I'm going to put the mask on because the reason I, I want you to have a mask is when you're taking people's temperature and when you're setting up the mask. You, if you don't have a mask on, you're breathing on the host. Now, is that a danger? Maybe. Maybe not. Do I know? Absolutely certain? No, I don't. But I just know that we want to do everything we can to keep people safe. We want to do everything we can to help people feel safe. So when you're setting up, it's really important that you have the mask on. And I just want to caution you. Um, I understand the big problem with masks, and there are some people who are very adamantly against wearing masks. And the reason they're adamantly against it is I understand it. If they have been wearing it for a while, there could be germs on the mask. So don't be back here and pull your mask down and put it back up and pull it down because then it could be on your hands. So don't do that. So put your mask on. Now, you don't have to wear the whole mask if you, mask if you choose not to. I'm just asking you, when you check people in, when you're getting their temperature, when you're setting up for mask, that you have a mask on so you're not breathing on the host. And when I celebrate mass, the only host that is going to be in front of me it's going to be this pattern with the host that I'll be eating. Now, most of you know, I normally break that host up and share it with others. Well, right now I can't do that. Because during the Mass, I breathe on that host. So again, since it could 
Now, is there a danger? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. But I want to do everything I can to help people feel safe and to keep people and to keep people safe. That is a requirement of the law of love. So when you're setting up, I need you to have your mask on. By the way, when you take your mask off, it's probably better to have these things so that you don't have to touch the mask itself, so that you have it on. So you're going to set it up. You're going to put one of these mid-size hosts, and we have this little thing here, and that has the mid-size host on it. There's a little thing. You take out the host. You put one host on there. You put it back. Then you put host in the patent. There'll be no big host, okay? Because again, to break up the big host, I'm touching all the host, I'm breathing over the host, so we won't have a big host. Those are going to be, hopefully, we'll be able to use those again someday, because the symbolism of that is, is kind of important. But the host that the priest will be breaking is this host, and for thousands of years, <laughs> this size host is the host that the priest broke. So it's not like we're doing anything denying the faith or anything. Okay, so you'll. You fill this up with host, and you put it. You put the pall on top of the little patent. Put this on the top, and then you put it on the server table. And then we need five vessels. So the patent is one vessel. We have ciboriums. Don't fill five to the rim. We're only going to have 150 people in church. You know, each one of these holds probably close to 150 to probably 200 hosts. So if you fill. Um, we're going to have enough hosts for, you know, till the end of the world. We don't want to have that. So, um, we'll have one, two, three. There's one in the tap on that, that's four. And, um, five. So again, all in all, we want to have, and right now, whoever would be setting up for Saturday night, you probably just want to put about a hundred hosts out, because we have so many in the in the tabernacle, so it would be good if we could get that down a little. So, between these four vessels, you're going to probably put a hundred host. That's not a whole lot of host, so don't fill them to the brim. But we need a vessel for each person. And it's all going to go on the server table. So again, when you set it up, you put the host in, you have your mask on, and you set it up. Now, if you don't feel comfortable wearing a mask, the whole mask, after you get everything set up, after you've checked everybody in, if you want to take your mask off and throw it away, whatever you want to do with it, I don't care. But when you're setting up the host, when you're taking people's temperature, you have to have a mask on. And it would be better if you put it on at the beginning and don't touch it until you're done setting everything up, uh, setting everything up and putting everything out. Because otherwise we're going to have a problem. Now just that so you know, when you come up it's going to be set up a little different than normal. There's a music stand by the priest chair. There's a book on that. You don't have to touch it. There's a book on the server table, this, the uh, credence table. You don't have to touch it. It's out there. The servers will be setting that up. So you don't have to touch it. The priest will check the book before Mass. Make sure he knows where the ribbons are. Make sure everything's set. You don't have to touch the books. All you got to do is set up the vessels like you normally do. Get them out. Again, on Saturday night, this Saturday, we'll probably only need 100 hosts for the next few weeks. All the Masses. There's going to be no more than 150 people at Mass, because we just, with the social distancing, that's about all that we can handle. Now, there'll be other people outside. Oh, I'm sorry. There'll be other people outside. So there might be 30, 40, 50. I don't know. Check with the priest beforehand. The priest will know how many people have signed up to be outside. So 150 hosts for the in inside total, and, you know, there might be, um, I think on Memorial Day, we had 32 people in the parking lot who receive communion outside. So we might need an extra 50 host or 75 host or we'll let you know. So check with the priest before Mass. Thank you for your ministry. And again, hopefully we can all work together. Hopefully people will come and we'll be in good humor. And if they get frustrated, we'll roll their eyes, but they won't lash out. We want to... Satan would win a victory if we're getting angry with each other, if we're getting frustrated with each other. That's not what we want. We want to, with love, deal with the people around us. God bless you. Thank you for your ministry. One last thing, and I'm sorry I forgot this in the initial part. One of the guidelines is telling us that the priest should have his own chalice. 
Now, I, the chalice I have is that beautiful crystal chalice my parents gave me that I don't use very often, so other people have given me chalice over the years. But for Father Ben and I, we will have one chalice that he uses. That way he's not drinking from the chalice that I drink from. So this chalice here will be Father Bednar's chalice for the next two months. So if you would make sure that when you set up for Father Bednar, you use this chalice. We're going to clean things, soap and water, just like we always do, but just for that extra measure of safety. For Father Bednar, we'll just use the one chalice. So please take a look at this. This will be the chalice that he'll be using. Thank you.